A warm welcome to the paper presentation of Alcure Assisted Whole Body Control for a Wheeled Bipedal Robot with Kinematic Loops. This paper showcases modeling and control techniques for the robotic system shown in the picture, the so-called Ascental Robot. My name is Victor Clem and I'm here with my colleague and co-author Alessandra Mora. Hello everyone. I'll be the one who is asking questions today to make this seem a bit more interactive. So let's kick things off, Victor. What was the motivation for this work? A year ago at iCRO 2K19, we presented a novel robotic system, the so-called Ascento robot. In our paper, we showed the mechanical design of the system, as well as some basic modeling and control techniques. And how was it controlled back then? We used a linear quadratic regulator to stabilize the robot, which we interpolated on different leg heights. The model used in the LQR was a simplified two-wheeled inverted pendulum linearized around the upright equilibrium point. It was robust, but not very versatile. Why did you simplify the model in the first place? The legs of our robot are parallel kinematic linkages. These allow the robot to move its legs up and down with only one motor. As it turns out, it is not quite trivial to model such a linkage dynamically. If you're interested in the mechanical design of the linkage, including the design optimization of its motion and spring concept, please have a look at our previous paper. But now to the new paper. What exactly is it about? We now present the full 3D dynamics model of the system, including the kinematic loops in its legs. Based on this model, a hierarchical controller is synthesized. We start by opening the linkages in the legs of the robot. This is done to reduce the robot to a kinematic tree structure. In that way, we can use typical modeling techniques like forward differential kinematics used for systems with serial kinematic linkages. And how you close these loops then again? Of course, the loops are only opened theoretically. To close them, we introduced equal but opposite dynamic constraint forces at the opened joints. We then explicitly derive these forces based on the positional loop closure constraint, which is brought to the acceleration level. These bearing forces vary with dynamic motions of the system and always account for the loop keeping its closed state. Further, we introduce more constraints at the wheels of the system. We assume perfect rolling on the ground surface as well as no ground penetration. That way, we finally get the open loop dynamics equations with constraints for the linkages and the wheels, which can be used to project the dynamics to a constraint consistent space. But how is the dynamics then used to synthesize the controller? At the heart of our control strategy lies the whole body controller. It takes an estimated state, the model of the system, and high-level command and calculates the four motor torques directly. It is a hierarchical controller, meaning we can specify different tasks and their order. The controller iterates through these tasks and solves each task as good as possible without hindering the previous ones. Additionally, some inequality constraints can be specified, respecting the motor saturations as well as the ground contact and no slipping. The dynamics model comes in as a first task, meaning that the controller must respect the physics of the system. The model was validated in a custom MATLAB simulation. The second task controls the height of the robot. It enables intuitive control based on the velocity, position, and acceleration trajectory. The base roll task can be controlled by a similar trajectory. Additionally, this task allows for the legs being terrain adaptive as we will show later. But how does it balance? Balancing is achieved by integrating an LQR into the whole body controller as a motion task. The model is instantaneously linearized around its current operating point by lumping different bodies together, as shown in blue for the pendulum body and in red for the wheels. But can this cope with different leg extensions now? Yes. The linearization is performed using the current robot configuration in every control iteration. So in our case, at the controller frequency of 400 Hertz. 
The next task is the base yaw task, allowing to control the heading direction of the robot. And the final task minimizes the motor torques and thus minimizes power consumption and enforces thereby a single solution. The controller was tested in Gazebo, ported with minor adaptions to the real robot. Of course, it didn't work right away, but after some bug fixing and tweaking, we had it running. And tuning parameters was very easy, as each task can be independently tuned. OK, but is it now better than the old controller? Yes. Not only is it more versatile, it is also more robust, as shown in this experiment. During impact, the wheel motors saturate at 3.5 newton meters, showing that constraint optimization is indeed at play here. Does it know its environment through perception? No. The robot can cope with unknown disturbances. Here, a manual disturbance is introduced, and the robot reacts to it by adapting its legs to reach a commanded zero roll angle, all while balancing. I see that the robot can now drive faster, but how do you prevent it from tipping over? While curved driving, we can set a reference roll angle to track. By calculating this reference, we can move the zero moment point or tipping point to the center of its line of support, thus resulting in maximum robustness against tipping over. The resulting motion is curve leaning, like a motorcyclist. So have you tried any other experiments? We show various experiments in our video. Also some crazy robustness tests, like the one in the top left are shown. Here the robot reacts blindly and catches itself securely after driving down with one leg. We also show the obligatory hockate stick tests and assert robustness thereby. Can it drive, drive over terrain as well? Yes, also on the hillside, as the legs of the robot adapt to keep it straight and upright. And what about slipping? So although the model does not account for slipping, the controller is able to cope with some slipping and catches itself. Of course, everything has a limit. Nice, I see. So where can I find more info? If you want to have a look at all experiments, please watch our video. For the theory behind it, you could consult our paper. And for more info, please visit our website. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Bye. Hope to see you all at iCrowd 2021.